Hey there, welcome to Geeky Greenhouse. In today's video, I'll be talking all about grow lights. Shopping for a new grow light can be very overwhelming. Things are always changing and there are just so many options. So the goal of this video is to help you decide on the perfect grow light for your needs. I'll avoid too much technical detail and we'll focus on the practical uses for your grow lights and cover a few basic options. I'll also touch on the types of grow lights that are available from LEDs to fluorescence and a couple other options and hopefully give you the tools you need to pick the right one for you. And at the end of the video, I'll answer some frequently asked questions like how high should you be hanging your LEDs above your plants and how many watts do I need when buying a grow light? And I'll also be doing a mock shopping experience to give you an idea of what you should be looking for when you're shopping for a new grow light online. If you're just looking for a simple recommendation on a grow light to buy, I'll leave links in the description below and we'll be sure to keep them up to date. As things change, we try new grow lights pretty much every year, so we'll be sure to keep those links up to date with our current recommendations. And if you do want more detail, we have an article over on our website, geekygreenhouse.com, all about choosing the right grow light for you, so I'll leave that link down below as well. Okay, so to start, let's talk about whether or not you even need a grow light. And to do this, I think I'll categorize the types of growers that there are into three main categories. The first category is seed starters. This is primarily how we use our grow lights, and that is to start seedlings early in the spring to be transplanted out. This means that our grow lights are being used for about two, maybe two and a half months early in the spring, only to be put away into storage until the following year. The second category is houseplant growers. If you have houseplants, they're not all that demanding on light, but if you just don't get enough natural sunlight coming in, it can be a major help to have a grow light to provide a little extra energy for your plants. And the third category is people who wanna grow plants year round indoors. Maybe you just don't have a place to grow outdoors, not even a balcony or a sunny window, and you just wanna grow some plants inside. There are grow lights that can do that. In any of these cases, a grow light may be helpful, but determining whether you need one or not comes down to how your plants are performing in their current setup and whether or not they really need extra light. For home gardeners, I would only get a grow light if you're planting from seed indoors and you're growing a larger number of plants and require the extra light. For example, we grow somewhere around 100 plants every year, most of them from seed, and we have this big shelf, which helps us grow a lot in a small space. Now we exclusively use LED grow lights and we'll talk a little bit about why in this video, but I do wanna cover a couple other options that are on the market that may be for you. Fluorescents are a very popular option. Many people will buy shop lights that are not really intended for growing plants to start off their seedlings and that's perfectly fine. It's a great budget option, although they probably won't last as long as LEDs. There are also HIDs, which are high intensity discharge lights like high pressure sodium and metal halide lights. These are basically big bulbs that produce a wide spectrum of light and can grow some really healthy plants, but they're expensive to run and they produce a lot of heat, which you don't have to worry about with LEDs. And the final option is of course LEDs. There are so many benefits to LEDs over the other options and very few drawbacks. For example, they're very efficient. Each diode can produce a specific band of light, meaning that your lights can be tuned to only produce the type of light that plants need to grow. LEDs are also nice and quiet. And this is because they produce very little heat, meaning that you don't need to run fans to keep them cool. The result is the long-term cost of running these lights is very, very low. They tend to last a very long time as well. And the upfront cost continues to drop as more and more people are choosing LED lights. So with all of that, let's start talking about how to choose a good grow light. First of all, you wanna focus on lights that are actually specifically made to grow plants. Some manufacturers will try to trick you into buying their lights that aren't actually made for growing plants by tacking on the word grow light. The first thing to look for in a grow light is the color of light. What we recommend is a full spectrum grow light like the one you see behind me. It produces natural, almost sunlight-like light, which is both beneficial to the plants and easy on the eyes. There are bluish purplish lights that you'll see on the market as well. And I definitely wouldn't recommend using these because they're very hard to be around. They'll strain your eyes and they actually don't grow the plants quite as well as full spectrum. If you look at fluorescent bulbs, you likely won't see a spectrum chart. Instead, you'll see a Kelvin rating. So maybe something like 3,500, which would be a more red shifted light 
good for growing plants that are fruiting, or you might see something rated at 5,000 or 6,000 Kelvin, which is much more blue shifted, which is great for growing seedlings and leafy greens. So you found a full spectrum light. What are some of the features you should be looking for? These days, grow lights can have some really great features that make them much easier to use. And I'll start with a dimmer knob, which I've grown to love. As you can see, I can up the light output of this light from 100% all the way down to 5%. And some will actually allow you to shut the light off completely, which can be very helpful. This isn't necessary, of course, and it can be a little bit confusing early on, but most manufacturers will include recommendations for where to put the dimmer knob based on how old your plants are. This feature is great because you can reduce the intensity when your plants are really young, saving you on energy. Another thing to look for is form factor. As you can see, this is a very different grow light from the ones that we have hanging behind me. This light has a clip on the bottom. It has a built-in timer and it has four separate LEDs on these bendable arms, making it easy to aim this at your plant where the light's needed. If you don't have the space for a shelf like this or a place to hang lights, then something with a clip on the bottom might be good. However, in our experience, unfortunately, the components that go into lights like this typically aren't of the highest quality and they might not last quite as long, but they do tend to cost less as well. Another great form factor is long and slim like this Spider Farmer SF600 LED grow light. This is one of my all time favorite lights that we've used because it's just perfect for filling out an entire shelf on our grow shelf. By the way, if you wanna make your own grow shelf like this one, we have a video all about how we put this together. It saves so much space by vertically stacking all of your plants up and I'll leave a link to that video down below. There are a couple drawbacks to this particular light, namely that it's a little awkward to hang it from these cables. There isn't a dimmer knob and it isn't water resistant, so it could be improved, but so far we've had no issues with it whatsoever and it's the perfect amount of light for growing some young seedlings. Another great feature are easily adjustable hanging ropes with ratchets so that you can easily raise and lower the lights once they're hung. Some lights come in a fixed hanging position, which is not ideal as the plants grow. You don't want them getting too close to the light. And the last thing you wanna look for is good name brand components. Now, two of the best manufacturers for the diodes themselves are Samsung and Osram. And if the grow light doesn't mention a name brand, then you should probably just move on. If the grow light has a driver like this one up here, you wanna look for Meanwell, which is sort of the best name brand out there, but there are other good manufacturers out there as well, like Sozen and Spider Farmer. Now, it seems like there's a new manufacturer of grow lights coming onto the market every other week, but some of the brands that we have used with good results are Vipar Spectra, which are these lights behind me, Spider Farmer, Migro, and Grow Wealth. And you'll also likely see Mars Hydro and Vivosun, which are reputable manufacturers as well. Now moving on to some of the frequently asked questions about grow lights. The first and most common has to be, how high should I hang my LED above my plants? Now, thankfully, most good manufacturers will have an instruction booklet which will help you decide how high to hang them and where to place the dimmer knob depending on how old your plants are. But if you don't have any guidance from the manufacturer, a good rule of thumb is you wanna keep your plants about 12 to 18 inches above the leaves of your plants. That's pretty far, especially when you compare it to something like a fluorescent bulb, which can be placed a few inches above the plants. A good way to know whether your lights are too close or too far is to watch how your plants are responding. If you see them curling up their leaves, sort of like a taco shell, that's a good indication that the lights are too close and you should back them off. If they're too far or the light intensity is too low, your plants may grow a little bit taller and leggier and you should bring the lights a little bit closer. Another good question is how many watts do I need? And that's really gonna depend on how many plants you're growing and what area you need to cover. Wattage varies greatly across the industry, anywhere from 20 watts all the way up to hundreds of watts, 500, 600 watt lights. For seed starting, I usually recommend anywhere between 75 and 150 watts, depending on how big your grow space is. This light is a 150 watt light, but you can dim it down to half that power or even a quarter of that power, depending on the needs. This light falls at about 74 watts, spread out across an area of about three and a half to four feet by one to two feet wide. This light we hang about 12 inches above our seedlings and raise it up a little bit higher as the plants grow taller. 
And another question that we get commonly is how long should I be running the grow lights on a daily basis? If you're starting seedlings indoors, your vegetables need quite a bit of light, usually between 14 and 16 hours of light every day is ideal. Now that may seem like a really long time, but vegetables really need all of that light duration to get off to a really good start. If you happen to be growing plants indoors year round and you move on to the stage where the plants are starting to produce fruits and seeds, that's around the time you might wanna reduce the amount of light to around 12 hours on and 12 hours off. By the way, the way that we do that is by plugging in the grow light to an outlet timer. They're usually around 10 bucks or cheaper and you set it up to go on and off whenever you need. So to end this video, I thought it would be a good idea to go on Amazon and pretend I was shopping for a grow light for the first time and sort of walk you through exactly what you should be looking for. So let's say I wanna buy a 100 watt LED grow light. So let's check out this Vipar Spectra P1000. This is actually a light that we own and we recommend often. And let's look at this listing. So it says, P1000 LED grow light, a little bit misleading once again, 1000 when this is in fact just a 100 watt grow light. However, they also mentioned that they're using Samsung's LM301B diodes, Samsung being one of the leaders and a very recognizable brand name. It says dimming and daisy chaining, so you can link multiple lights together, that's what daisy chaining is. Full spectrum grow light for indoor plants, so if we scroll down, we see new diode layout. So this light has gone through multiple generations and they've changed how the diodes are positioned on the face of the light to get a more even distribution of the light across the grow area. So that's definitely a good thing. I really like that Vipar Spectra has done that. Now let's move down to this section where they talk about the full spectrum light output because this is an area that can be pretty confusing. This says it consists of 660 nanometer red light that's a type of diode. It emits specifically that wavelength of light that plants use to grow. Also 3000K and 5000K white lights. So these are two different types of diodes. If you look at this picture, you can see that some of them are bluish and others are yellowish. Those are both white LEDs, but 5000 Kelvin is much more blue and 3000 Kelvin is much more red or warmer light. So you get both of those on the same grow light. And finally, 730 nanometer far red infrared spectrum LEDs are also on this panel. So you get four different types of diodes on the same light. Ultimately, they produce a very natural sort of sunlight-like light, which results in a color spectrum, which they share with you here on this graph. Finally, they go on to say low energy consumption grow lighting comparable to traditional 250 watt high pressure sodium or metal halide consuming only 100 watts. It's hard to verify these claims, but again, we know that LED lights are much more efficient than other traditional growing lights. Definitely check for coupons. If you're shopping on Amazon, all you have to do is click that little checkbox and $20 will be taken off this light, meaning that this is just a $60 light. Again, Vipar Spectra's P1000 has been a staple for us personally, and we've recommended it to countless growers. Lots of happy people buying this light. If you like, you can go down and look at some of the reviews that people have left for the specific light. If you can find a picture of the actual growing light that you're buying, like this one here, you can see that's actually the light. And this person gave it five stars. Hopefully this was helpful. I know it can be very overwhelming when you're shopping for new lights online. There are just so many different statistics and words and stats and graphs. It can be very overwhelming, but hopefully this helps you read between the lines and get to what's most important. Don't forget there'll be links down in the description of this video with our current recommendations for good LED grow lights for a variety of users, including some of the lights we've shown in this video, and we'll keep that up to date with our current recommendations going forward. I hope this video helps you decide on the perfect grow light for your needs. Thanks so much for watching Geeky Greenhouse, and I'll see you next time.